And welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael DeLon, and today I'm talking with Cash Miller. Now, Cash, thanks for um, squeezing me into your calendar and being on my being my guest today. Uh, thank you for having me. I uh, love getting on podcasts and such and talking with individuals such as yourself and having great conversations. Well, we are in for a great conversation because Cash and I are cut from the same cloth in many ways because we both love entrepreneurship, small business, and marketing. So if that's you, you need to be listening to this because Cash has a great um, program, a great company, and he can help business owners really, really amplify their success the way they do things, which is which is really fun. That's what we want to dive into. So as we get there, Cash, tell us, how in the world did you get to doing what you do today? Well, um, for myself, this started as, you know, I'm like, in our family, um, our family is like entrepreneurs. You know, it's my father was, my uncle was and stuff. And I'd actually run like a family business for a number of years, but um, I ended up, you know, kind of burned out. I'm actually, I'm also an army veteran. So, okay. you know, at the time I'd been in the military and I'd also run a business for like eight years, but I was burned out. I was like, you know, I'd had, you know, a number of employees and everything and all the stress, totally different business than what I do now. Okay. But you know, so I decided actually, and this was um, back in 2006. Yeah, you know, I decided I'm going to go back in the military. I'm going to make a career of it and everything. And I and and I went in and I'm like, because I knew the military, and I was like, I never want to run another business again. I, the stress and all, it's just not worth it. That lasted about nine months. Um, you know that feeling. Of, right. you know, I'll never <laughs> do it again. And so I ended up. I said, okay, well. I need something to occupy myself. This is like, you know, before side hustles were a regular thing. Right. So, right. yeah. And so about the, uh, the, right at the end of, um, you know, 2007, I actually decided that I'm going to put up a website. I don't know really anything about websites and stuff. No clue, but Hey, you know, everybody else is doing it. I got a little spare time, you know, and I was actually about to be deployed to Iraq you know, with my unit and stuff. And I'm like, well, I'll have some downtime. I'm not going to be working 24 seven and stuff, but I'm not going to have family. I'm not exactly going to be able to go anywhere, you know, so I need something to occupy my mind. And so I built my own website and I decided to make it um, information focused to help small business owners. Yeah, you know, it was marketing advice, accounting. It was like all the things. And it was kind of the theme was, is here's what not to do in business. You know, all the mistakes I ever made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And stuff. And I spent a ton of time just writing and writing and writing and I built my, you know, the entire site myself. And eventually I got a little burned out on the writing part. I'm like, this is a lot of work, you know, and everything. Yeah. And what I noticed is um, in your group of people you've interviewed, you recently interviewed somebody I know, um, Steve Smith, who was on a recent podcast. And he, uh, he was actually back in like 2009, one of my first clients, How you know, cool. just on the side, he's, you know, he's a really very good business coach. And um, I had actually reached out to him and a number of other coaches. I said, I don't want to write all this content. You know, this was before content marketing was really a thing, but I'm like, this is a lot of work. Let me see if I can use other people's content. But because of the theme of the site, I decided to reach out to business coaches, you know, marketing experts and everything. And he was one of the people I reached out to. And eventually I got to a point where, I need to get traffic. How do I do this? Start to learn, you know, teaching SEO. There was no such thing as classes right. back in the day. Right. Sure. So, you know, I became self-taught. I, you know, looked at everything, read everything, tried everything, you know, well, me and Steve ended up striking up, you know, a friendship and we're friends actually to this day and such. And there came a point where, cause we were talking regularly and everything and kind of sharing advice. And he was like, what are you doing to get traffic? And it was like, well, I'm doing this, this, this. He said, can I do, you know, could you do some of that stuff for me? And I'm like, well, sure. Yeah. yeah you want some money for it? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That'd be nice anyway. You know, I'm, you know, sharing advice. I'll give you that all day long. But if you want me to do a little bit of work, Hey, you know, it'd be good. You know, and it was a few bucks. It wasn't much money or anything, but it was like, yeah, that and which led to like another one, you know, saying, hey, can I get, you know, get some help and another one and such. And eventually I got um, after a few years of doing this and just kind of learning, given whatever situations would arise, um, you know, it's 2011. And at this point, I'm like, now it's go to Afghanistan and stuff. And I'm like, OK, well, I got to go to Afghanistan. But do I really want to keep doing the army thing or, you know, do I, do I really want to? 
make this a career. And I've been in spent, you know, seven and a half years of my life already. Yeah. You know, so I decided like, maybe it's time to start running a business again. You know, so I said, well, I think I can make this SEO thing work. Yeah. Let's say, I think I could maybe sell this as a service. I understand the work. I understand what's involved. And so, you know, ended my, you know, my contract came to an end and put up my shingle and said, Hey, I offer SEO services. And this is when, you know, we didn't have agencies all over the place and everything. And people were, you know, still relatively new to ranking on Google and other search engines, running paid ads and stuff. One of my clients, one of my very first clients, I was actually doing pay-per-click ads. They were a mergers and acquisition company. And I'd been hired to do that on, and it's just, let's like say another side thing. Um, but I was actually running their ads while I was in Afghanistan. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would. Yeah, we would have like the MWR, like place, you know, they'd have computer terminals and stuff. Yeah. And I would go in there, I'd log into the account, I'd be making my tweaks, learning as I go and stuff and seeing what I could do to get them the clicks and everything. Um, and they had no clue that I was doing that, you know, that where I was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and so, you know, eventually it's like, like most businesses, you hustle, you know, when you uh, start doing something, you know, because you're doing all the sales and you're doing all the work too. But piece by piece, you know, I built it up, expanded the services. We're full service now. And we have been for years where, you know, I've got 600 website clients, you know, that we manage and such that we built sites for. And, you know, we do SEO and pay-per-click ads and stuff. The things that a lot of agencies do, but we've got a, a bit larger team for it and stuff, but it's been a, a journey getting here. You know, yeah. So. Always is, always is. And that's one of the things I want to, I want to chime into because you have a passion kind of like I do for, for um, not just small business owners, but entrepreneurs who are maybe starting out, who are where you are, who are thinking about a business and they're really good at what they do, but this whole marketing thing and how do I do it? Let's talk to about that and how you can connect with them, partner with them, help them and guide them around this whole world of online marketing and things. To take somebody who has a good idea around something, whether it's a, a, a plumber, a, a, an attorney, financial advisor, whatever, doesn't really matter. How do you how do you help them take that idea and make a make a name for themselves, for lack of a better term? Well, I think a lot of a lot of business owners, especially when you're starting out, you know, there's a lot of things you don't consider. Marketing, nobody like the business owner never wants to actually do marketing. Right. You know, that's the tedious thing because most people, um, you know, or at least a good majority of entrepreneurs, they get into it because it's something they really enjoy. Whatever that trade may be, whatever that business, you know, or it's a great idea that says, "Hey, I." You know, I could really do something with this. And so the things that come with running a business, marketing included, are those, you know, those are the things that, you know, you, you realize you need, but you don't want to actually do. So it's usually, you know, either ignore it if you're, you know, a really small business, or you try to find somebody along the way. And it may be like, there's so many businesses that have, you know, hired an intern or, you know, somebody that says, oh, you know how to, you know, do marketing or so, you know, if, I always love the social media ones, you know, it'd be somebody that's posted on social media. So suddenly they know how to do social media marketing, right. yeah. you know, just because they can make a post and it's not really the same thing. Um, you know, so it's not, yeah, you know, they, they always want somebody else to do it for them. Oh, yeah. Uh, they don't want to have to do it themselves. So, you know, when we're looking at, you know, partnering up with the company and say, okay, we're going to handle the marketing, we, we have to take a dive. We got to get you to think about your own company. Yeah. You know, what are the services? What are the things that you're doing? What's your differentiators? And these are the things that they're really not asking of themselves. You know, right. why are you different? You know, you, you run a plumbing company. Why are you, what makes you different than the other, you know, the 20 others that are in that same city? or county or whatever, you know, that is your unique, you know, you, you know, selling proposition. Yeah. So, you know, what's your USP? Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, 38 years of experience. Yeah, exactly. But so is the other guy, right? <laughs> yeah, they've been, you know, the other person's been doing it forever. But yeah. most companies do have something at least that they can kind of build around if they think about it. it. Experience can be one of those things, but how do you make that sound unique? You know, how do you make it different, you know, different than what everybody else is saying? Yeah. And, you know, can you do multiple things as well? Yeah. And then it's a matter of, okay, what are the avenues? Digital is what we focus on. And there's so many things you can do. It's, when you actually, and, and it's hard for a business owner, if you're not in marketing, and even if you are in marketing, you know, to like really wrap your 
brain around the avenues that now exist. You know, everything is like um, uh, an ecosystem, you know, so you can say, well, I want to do paid ads on Google or something. Okay, that's all well and good. But, you know, you see the Amazon ad that follows you around because of some product. Well, you want to run a retargeting, remarketing type ad. Okay, well, that could be actually on a different system than you might have dri driven the original traffic from. You know, so you think of using Facebook or another social media platform, Instagram or something, and you get a lot of clicks over to your website, and then you're using Google to follow them around with an ad. Yeah. You know, programmatic advertising advertising has become huge, you know, where you're doing, you know, video ads, audio ads, HTML5, you know, the display ads that have movement and stuff. Yeah. But these things take time to put together. You know, they take some expertise to get the messaging across to realize the different formats and stuff, you know, so it's, it's great if you find somebody that really knows what they're doing. It's even better if you find that they have a team behind them. That's the reason that you go to an agency, yeah. because it's multiple experts. Yeah, you know, I always love the, the, the one that goes to the freelancer and the freelancer says, yeah, you know, no offense to freelancers. Yeah, because everybody kind of starts that way. You know, I say I was a one man SEO show, you know, show when I first started. But when they say they know I can do paid ads, I can do SEO and I can build your website and stuff, they may be able to do them. It doesn't mean they're good at all of them. You know, right. so well, and, and and on that, because we hear a lot about just you know, outsource it to you know, Philippines or whatever, and they can do it, they can do it cheap. And yeah. that always gets the business owners idea. Oh, cheap. I'm a new entrepreneur, I don't have any money. Here's the mm -hmm. problem we found with that years ago is many outsourcers like that are good at following directions. And mm -hmm. if you as the business owner have totally directions, they're great. Most business owners don't have the directions and hence that's why they need somebody like you, right? Yeah, you know, that's totally like on the money. You know, they're really good at you know, following directions and stuff. Tell them what you want. You know, there are like services, um, you know, one that comes to mind is like Design Pickle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is like for graphic design work and stuff. And they've got some great talent and stuff on there, but you still have to tell them exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. So it still takes time to do that. You know, like I say, there's a number of services. There's white, you know, like freelance people that will do it there. You know, you can go to Upwork and stuff and find things, you know, but the problem is, is they all need very specific instructions. And like you mentioned, you know, if you're the business owner, you probably don't have them. Yeah, right. so it's, you know, if you find somebody that's, you know, been doing this a long time, they don't need instructions. That's right. Yeah. And the, the other the other real value, you mentioned it, and I want to dive in just a little bit, is is having that that third party outside perspective that, that you bring to the table, Cash, where you are looking into that business, asking those questions, and and you've been there, number one. But number two, that business owner is too close to his business to really see his business the way his prospects see his business, but you can do that. Yeah. And actually, you know, that's, that's one of the things for, I tell my own team this and stuff, you know, cause I've dealt with, you know, a number of writers and designers and developers and stuff. Um, I've always found that the design aspect is interesting because I try to put myself in the shoes of that business owner and the type of business that they run, you know, and say, okay, who are they looking to attract? You know, what kind of service, how are they providing the services and such, you know, what differentiates them and everything. And the thing is, is like, you'll get creative people and they'll do a great creative job, but sometimes they'll miss some of the things you need, you know, need that are related to the business owner, you know, from the, the standpoint of what they're looking to attract. So you can have a great aesthetic, but you might miss some of the key points, you know, the selling it attributes. And so I always try to put myself in any of our account managers and stuff. I'm like, you need to put yourself in their shoes. So I like people, um, you know, to have on those accounts that are not the, you know, the technical, I say they're an account manager. They understand the ins and outs, but they understand the business owner. They can, you know, they maybe been in such roles in the past management roles and things, and they can say, okay, you're really looking to be able to do this. This is who you're trying to attract. And then they can, you know, use that in, you know, their own insight to be able to help make a better final product. Well, you know, and, and, and it's really important because what, what you do, I think is, is, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but, but you guys come in as, as a, um, a, a partner per se, you, you're not, um, it's not like the business owner is just hiring you to do this job. You want to get more involved in that business to help them really understand how all this works together because it really does 
so that they can get greater traction, acceleration, growth long-term versus I need a website. Can you do a website? Well, yes, but I do a whole lot more. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. We build a lot of websites because it's like, that's your foundation, yeah. but that's what we're trying to explain to people. This is the foundation of everything you're, you know, it's an online storefront. Okay. Yeah. That's what it is. That's the same thing as if you open a restaurant and you got to have people come in. Well, your websites, it's exactly that in digital format. So, and you start with that. And if you build a foundation, I always tell people it's an interesting thing about websites too. Um, you can have a really good look, looking website, really, it, it does everything you need. And you can be in the smallest company, you could be a one person show, and it will look like you're a large corporation. And you can do the reverse. You can end up being a large corporation and have a horrible website. And because you're not necessarily a known name, yeah, like I say, a lot of businesses are yeah. large, but they're not known, right? right? And it's like, well, you look at it and it's like, uh, I don't even know if I should do business with these people. You know, so you want to build the foundation. And from there, you start to build that ecosystem. You know, each form of advertising when it's online is going to be, they're not all appropriate, you know, for every type of business. So you have to kind of sort through like social media forever has been, oh, you need to be on social media. You need to be on this one, this one, this one. Well, I found if you take the plumber and the HVAC guy and stuff, those are great add-ons. But if they're a smaller business, that's not where you start. You're going to blow a lot of money and you're not going to get much of a return. So you may have to make sure, you know, we try to educate them and like, this is why you don't start here. Okay. Down the road, as your budget grows and you want more brand exposure, sure. But if you want leads and stuff, you need to be over here. You need to be on this side yeah, and doing these things first. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, so many business owners, startups, small business owners think and believe they have to be everywhere. Yeah. And I, I tell them, I'm like, you don't have the money to be everywhere. I want you to be in one or two places at the beginning and dominate those one or two. So you become a household name. And then expand, but you just don't have the money to do it. And that's why that, that's why cash is so valuable because of the experience. They understand the expertise. Small business owners, entrepreneurs, startups, they just don't know. And they're going to listen to Cousin Larry or the, the girl at church. And it's like they're really good people and nice people, and we love them. They just don't know and understand marketing like yeah. cash does, right? Yeah, I mean, we get that all the time. It's like, well, my friend or my, you know, my daughter is going to do my, you know, our website and do our marketing and like, well, okay, do they have any actual marketing background and stuff? You know, another interesting thing too is, you know, you talk about like, you can't be everywhere necessarily. In some cases you can, and in some cases you can't. Market size matters. People need to understand yes. You know, they say, I'm in a town that's south of Nashville. Nashville is extremely expensive. You want to be the known name, you're going to spend a lot more money there than if you're in the town I'm in. You know, and like, I've got a guy that um, it's funny, he just signed up back up with us. We actually built him a website years ago. And then he switched to another company and he's back because he said, he said, you're the only ones that ever got it right. So I'm going to come back to you. <laughs> but he's in a, in a place that's like, 15,000 people and there's a couple of nearby cities. Yeah. That's a situation where I said, okay, if you have the budget and I know he's got some billboards, he's built a good business. It's a plumbing company and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, if you have the budget, you can own that market because of the size. You can be the known name. You can, you're the guy that should be expanding as long as you have some money to work with into other avenues that are not just straight lead, but brand awareness, because you become the only company ever, anybody's ever heard of in that market because of the size. That's Every right. situation is different. And you have, you know, as a business owner, you got to understand what your situation it is. And that's where we come in a lot of times is educating you based on, you know, what is your market? Who are you trying to reach? How many companies, how much competition do you have, you know? And how many people can you reach? You know, where do you want to go? How many people can you really serve? I, I work with a lot of people. They're like, well, I got to reach, you know, a hundred thousand people. And I'm like, yeah. and I, you start doing the math. Going, if I brought you a hundred people this month, could you actually service that many? Yeah. And, and that would be yeah. the worst thing you could ever do. No. Yeah. How about a steady stream of three to five you know, clients a month. Would that do, would that change your business radically? Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Let's be Stephen Covey, seven habits, right? Begin with the end in mind. Stop listening to everybody else and listen to cash and, and just talk with him because he's been around the block a couple of times. You said some things on this podcast that nobody else has ever said cash. 
market size. That's huge. And I would rather be the big fish in a really small pond market size yeah. than to try to be than, than to be a little fish in a really big Nashville. Yeah, that's exactly it. And um, and you can expand outside areas. Oh, and stuff. Totally. Every business, you know, like I say, you can be in a very unique business, a very niche business and stuff. Or like I say, you can be a plumber or something like that. And then it's a matter of who are you actually going to compete with? Yeah. You know, like I say your market size, your competition, you know, who is your target? And then how many of those people are are out there? Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it's you know, like that's the thing. Every situation, you know, don't compare yourself to, you know, necessarily other companies. Compare yourself to like look at what your situation is in that particular market that you're in. Yeah. And the other thing I want, as, as we start wrapping this up, though, I, I want to uh, applaud you, affirm you, and point people your way because too many times as, as small business owners and, and startup entrepreneurs and things, we would say, okay, um, I, I want to do Facebook. So I, I go find a Facebook guy. I, I need a website and I'll go find a website guy. And oh, I need to be on Twitter. I need to go find a Twitter guy. Or I need what? And we end up with like this cadre of people. And they all start saying different things and it's confusing mm -hmm. versus reaching out to cash who does like all of that. And, and who, but before he will get you down that road, he will have these conversations, right? Is that, would, is that accurate from what you've seen? Yeah. It's a lot of people will get advice from different areas and stuff. You know, one of our, like, I always have a, my personal philosophy. If we're talking services with a company, if I sell you something that I know is not going to work just because of the money involved, I'm going to pay that price two or three months down the road when I don't have a result for you. Yeah. Okay. If, if I can't get results, why I should not sell that service. I need to sell, I need to work with you and provide you services that can actually get a result. It shouldn't be about the money. Yeah. You know, like, yes, there's always a budget. You're going to be paid for your, you know, the services we're going to get paid, but it has to be right for you. Otherwise I am going to ruin that situation. So if I don't think it can be successful, I'm going to tell you that you may come to me and say, I want to do social because everybody says this. And if I don't think it's right for you, I'm going to tell you it's not right for you. And I'm, I'll explain why. Yeah. Uh, and we have a team of over 30 people that specialize in different areas. Yeah. You know, we have you know, project managers and account managers, paid ad specialists and stuff, you know, designers and developers and stuff. So we have people that are, are trained in their particular roles versus the freelancer that's saying I can do everything when they're not going to be good at any of it, you know, maybe one item, right? You know, I yeah. want people that are going to be good in each area. And we've been doing this, you know, now I've, uh, we just celebrated our like 12th anniversary. Yeah. You know, so I've been at this a little while and seen a lot of businesses and their individual situations. Yeah. And that's the kind of person you want to lock arms with. If somebody who's been around the block a few years, who's seen a lot of things, who's living it and who can really help guide and structure you because as a startup, as a relatively new entrepreneur, there's just a lot of questions and you're, you're searching everywhere and you're hearing all kinds of confusing, differing voices. That's why you need to reach out to Cash. Cash, this, is, this has been really insightful. How do people reach out to you? How do they find you and, and learn more about you and your company? Um, you can visit uh, titandigital.com. You know, we've got all of our services on there. We've actually got three different uh, physical locations too. I'm in Tennessee, but we have another office that's in Springfield, Missouri, uh, not far from you. Yeah. Um, and another one out in uh, Colorado as well. You know, so we've got experts, you know, in different places and such. And of course, we do a lot of video calls and whatnot. Um, so it's titandigital.com. You can also connect with me personally on LinkedIn. I'm really easy to find because there's not many people with the name cash. cash. So if you just do a, a search, I think my actual LinkedIn is like forward slash cash dot Miller. I'll yeah, grab I, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put so, it in the show notes. Right. And, um, you know, and I always love, con you know, connecting with people on LinkedIn and stuff, yeah. you know, hooking up, seeing their individual, you know, uh, stories and whatnot. And like I say, we're, you know, we're available, you know, we've got a lot of clients, a lot of experience in a lot of different industries and such, you know, and we really like what we do. So, you know, if I can help a business owner, I like to see people grow. I'll leave you, you know, like with this little thing about what we do. Um, it's impactful when you do marketing, right? If I do my job well, and I help your company, then you do well 
right? And then maybe you hire a few more people, you give out some raises to your employees, and maybe you've got a great service and I introduce that service to more customers that then benefit from it. So it's got a trickle down effect when you do marketing. And that is a very enjoyable thing to understand that it's a larger impact than just what you're doing for your own business. Absolutely. I, I, I love that vision because it's so true. And um, it really fires us up as marketers to make sure that we're giving great counsel, great wisdom, having results, helping our clients grow to make a larger impact in what they're doing in their communities, in people's lives. That fires me up too. So I'm glad you said that, brother. Um, all right. So reach out. TitanDigital.com is the website. I'll ca- I'm going to capture that and put in the show notes in case you're exercising, riding a bike driving a car, whatever, go back to the show notes. You can um, get titandigital.com and reach out to Cash Miller and his team. Have the conversation. Find out what's going on in your business. What are you struggling with? What do you need help with? Ask him. And I'm sure based on what little I know about him right now, if he can't help you, he'll tell you, but he's probably got resources. But when it comes to marketing and putting some things together with clear, consistent messaging and doing it right, um, I think he's going to be a great resource for you. So, Cash, thank you for, for doing what you do the way you do it and for being my guest today on Experts Speak. Oh, thank you for having me. I enjoyed the conversation. It has been quite a joy, brother. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Talk to you next time on Experts Speak. <laughs>